Hi guys, my name is Toby Wong, and the claim or the topic that I will be refuting is the fashion industry has a negative effect on society. So my opponent uh, backs up this claim with three secondary claims. The first being the fashion industry has a negative effect on children. Uh, the second being the fashion industry has a negative effect on teens. And the third being that the fashion industry has a negative effect on mental health. Now to begin, to support the opponent, my opponent's first claim, she goes on to say that children make themselves look older than they are, and from this, they, it leads to sexual harassment and assault. She also supports this claim, or this evidence, by saying that the girls can be easily find themselves in horrible situations, such as they can be mistaken for mature adults than they, when they are not. Uh, first of all, this claim really holds no statistical evidence. Uh, where did this claim come from, and how was the conclusion made? Uh, there's no correlation shown in the speaker's argument between girls who dress older and sexual harassment. And while these kids and making themselves look older could be seen as negative, a negative thing, the initial, the initial claim does not actually argue for her point. It really just makes a vague statement. And in contrast, actually, the fault doesn't really lie in the fashion industry. It more lies in the guidance of the child from their parent or guardian. Uh, in an article presented by Cardellian, Cardellian on a mother ran blog, We Have Kids, the writer notes that there are faults to the media and their impact on children. However, she argues that the problems lie within the lack of guidance that goes along with them, rather than with, goes along with them being exposed to these big girls and the big guys. Uh, my opponent also uh, supports their claim by saying girls are using makeup at a much younger age, and according to a source, uh, when children start using makeup at an earlier age, they can lose the value of self-expression and that and being confident in their own skin, um, and that the age of of makeup consumers gets lower, and that not only that, but the, the children using makeup is actually bad because these products contain toxic ingredients that can expose children to a higher risk of cancer. Um, in the last statement, there's really no proof sh shown that this is, exists and that there is a higher risk of cancer in children. And if that were even the case, then there should be st statistical evidence showing the higher rates of those getting cancer across all ages because of makeup. On another note, according to a report by the Dove Self Esteem Fund, 78% of girls felt more confident when wearing makeup rather than when they went without makeup. And while this may seem like a negative impact on self-esteem and such, it is actually a completely healthy way for boys and girls to feel good about themselves. According to Psychology Today, in 2016, women were told to stare at themselves in the mirror every morning before going about their days. After a two-week period, these women reported becoming more comfortable with their skin and also reported feeling less stressed and an increased feeling of self-love. There's also an increase in men who feel more confident about putting on a little makeup and dressing nicely. Despite the negative st stigma against men wearing makeup in the past, within recent years, more males have been reported feeling comfortable with wearing makeup. With queer male role models like Patrick Starr, James Charles, and Jeffree Star, as well as straight male role models like Ricky Dillon openly wearing makeup, it's caused an increase in males being more comfortable with expressing their love for makeup and other fashion industries. This is shown in the study by, done by The Conversation, which says that about 11% of those watching on YouTube in 2018 are male, and almost 20% are under 17 years old while in the past, it has only been about 6 to 7% of males. So my opponent's second claim states that the fashion industry has a negative effect on teens. She goes on to support this point by saying, teens put their time into fashion and their looks rather than other things. And a quote by Je Jeanette Mari Gibson Short Nielsen in 2014 said that this is causing the current generation to grow up in a shallow world where looks are more important than personality and skills. She then goes on to say that now teenagers do not go out with their parents on weekends, rather they plan their outings with their friends. This evidence has no relation to the actual claim. How does prioritizing one's looks affect whether teens are going out with their parents or their friends? Prioritizing one's looks is actually a positive thing. This way teens can learn to care for themselves and their bodies at a younger age and build a healthy habit. The fashion industry is extremely diverse and allows teens to express themselves creatively, whether that be through makeup or other clothes. One example would be Kanan Lonsdale. He's an openly queer actor who is known for his different, his different and eccentric style. He has reportedly said that doing so makes me happy to do that and more confident too. And for my opponent's final claim, she states that the fashion industry has a negative effect on mental health and that the youth grow up looking at the perfect uh, model body. This can lead to children and teens to have low self-esteem and they can also lead to eating disorders. Again, there are no real statistical evidence showing the proof that looking at the perfect model body has any real negative effects. While this may, may be true, on the contrary, there are multiple role models nowadays that advocate for the youth to love their body they are given. One example would be Melissa McCarthy. Despite her looks being outside of society's pretty list, she is widely loved and is a good role model for young girls who feel unconfident in their body. 
Also, if as many people are affected by the fashion industry as she states, so much that I developed to develop a, an eating disorder, then the percent of women who have anorexia to have a skin in your body should be high. However, according to ANAD, a website displaying all current eating disorder statistics in 2018, only about 0.9% of women suffer from anorexia in their lifetime. She, her last point for her claim states that the models themselves end up with eating disorders. According to staff, staff youth, models end up developing eating disorders because they are tied to lose weight or else they lose their jobs. Trying to fit into the normal standards of the industry can lead to models to have eating disorders and live at BMIs to maintain that standard body type. According to Psychology Today, however, most supermodels actually have increasingly been leaving their jobs and being treated unfairly, partially due to, due to the Me Too movement as well, which has been circling around the internet for the past couple of years. About 10% more models have reported having left their jobs due to mistreatment and have found themselves in a healthier mental state because of it. So while, so while these individual companies have ridiculed their workers, this problem does not fall on the entire industry, fashion industry shoulders. Thank you guys.